So you've heard a lot of information about why the Flint Hills and grasslands are such important biomes. But that always brings a question to my mind is, why do people set them on fire? Uh, sometimes when we're driving around, I see that the grasslands are being burned. But if they're so important, why would you want to burn them down? Well, let's take a look at this video and it explains why. In the Flint Hills, the first land burnings were sparked by spring lightning storms. These natural burns killed off low-growing trees and old dying grasses. From the ashes grew new grass, rich in protein and minerals from the limestone and flint just below the ground. From death sprouted new life. Fire has always been crucial to preserving the beauty, the diversity, and the balance of life here. Native Americans were quick to discover the benefits of burning. On horseback, they dragged lit sagebrush across the prairie to draw the bison to the fresh, tender, new grass. Early ranchers figured out, too, that cattle gained more weight on the new prairie grass. They burned their land regularly, usually in spring, employing tools like wire-wrapped rags to start a fire and burlap sacks and shovels to contain it. As recently as 50 years ago, landowners took a very low-tech approach to burning the prairie. People would go out and just simply flip out matches off a of horseback in order to get the fire to, uh, to start it. And once it did, then it went all the way across the prairie. Today, technology has revolutionized the way ranchers in the Flint Hills control and schedule their burns. Fire sticks and drip torches are the preferred method to burn the land. Fire sticks, a pipe with fuel inside, allows a continuous row of fire, but they can be dangerous. Drip torches offer a more controlled way to light the fires. Rakes drag embers and spread fire, and flappers and water pumps are simple aids to put them out. There are different philosophies on when and how often to burn. Some burn every year, while others wait a few years between burns to allow the diverse plants and animals of the prairie ecosystem to return. Still others burn the land in patches. Usually this means they burn one third of a pasture each year, which can be good for cattle, and also allows prairie wildlife to thrive. Cattle often gravitate naturally toward the recently burned areas without needing to be fenced in. But the practice of burning has also become a controversial one. There's often a short window of time when the weather is ideal for burning. And this can cause many landowners to burn in the same week. There may be only three or four days within the month of April that you can burn an area. And if that's the case, then everybody's going to burn and we're going to get problems. Within a uh, two-week period, it's not uncommon for 200,000 acres a day to be burned in the Flint Hills. What happens is uh, certain elements, uh, chemicals in the smoke, go downwind and form uh, ozone, which causes respiratory problems. That's why during the burning they put out a public health alert. To address concerns on both sides of the issue, scientific researchers are studying the effects of different burning schedules and their effects on the cattle and even on those outside of the Flint Hills. Burning will always play a part in keeping the delicate and intricate balance of the Flint Hills ecosystem. If that balance is to continue and the history and landscape is to be preserved, it is certain the long-held tradition of burning will carry on, whether by man or by nature. So now I want to ask you, what do you think? Should we continue this burning process or is it time to call it quits? <laughs>